Welcome to Engineering Update. I'm Casey Panetta, Managing Editor of ECN. In this week's episode, a material that triples the lifespan of aircraft engines, hypersonic weapons versus advanced anti-aircraft systems, and a sensor system to track Alzheimer's. Scientists at University West in Sweden have created a material that could extend the service life of engines by 300%. Traditionally, metal components in airplanes are covered in heat shield and coatings. This is key because airplane engines gain efficiency when they are capable of running at higher temperatures. But with the advent of a new technique and materials, the engines may last longer for less money. The new coating uses ceramic and plastic nanoparticles in powder form mixed with a liquid. The material is then heated to between 7,000 and 8,000 degrees Celsius and applied via plasma spray. The ceramic provides insulation, but the plastic creates tiny pores that allow the coating to expand and contract with the metal. The coating adheres to the metal in 0.5 millimeter thick layers of material that settle into a pattern of standing columns. This design makes the coating less prone to cracking. Traditional coatings are applied in layers, which reduces the flexibility. The coating should limit the amount of maintenance, increase the lifespan, and reduce the amount of money spent to coat the engines. The Cold War officially ended with the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, but old habits die hard, and since the fall of the Iron Curtain, Russian-American relations have been a tad frosty. I must break you. This fact, coupled with Russian support for a number of disreputable regimes, led a senior Pentagon staffer to call for a hypersonic weapon to defeat advanced, next-generation integrated air defense systems, like those possessed by Russia. Now, don't expect a full-on Red Dawn-style invasion anytime soon. Wolverines! But it won't be a stretch to say that the United States could find itself embroiled in conventional battle, or unconventional battle, with a Russian client state, a list which includes such despotic nations as Libya, Syria, China, and Iran, and of course the granddaddy of all rogue regimes, North Korea. With a list like that, the United States or one of its patrons could easily end up fighting a Russian client state equipped with Russian military equipment in a surrogate battle to decide our global sphere of influence and ensure the survival of... Wait, when did the Cold War end? Modern cruise missiles reach a top speed of 600 miles per hour, but hypersonic weapons could travel as fast as Mach 10. That's really fast. And the X-51 Rave Rider is an unmanned demonstration aircraft which already reached Mach 5.1 in flight testing. To defeat advanced anti-aircraft systems, speed is of the essence, so hypersonic weapons could be vital for next-gen warfare. One of the challenges of neurodegenerative diseases is that the changes in personality and behavior that indicate a problem might go unseen. This problem is often compounded by the fact that the person might be resistant to constant surveillance or moving to a care facility. In fact, in a survey conducted by the Spanish Institute for Elderly and Social Services, 70% of people over the age of 70 would choose their own home over a care home. The issue then becomes providing a higher level of medical care. The Technalia Center for Applied Research has created a house-sized sensor network that is capable of tracking the habits of people living inside the house and noting if their behavior becomes erratic, which could be indicative of an issue or the first signs of a disease like Alzheimer's. The sensor network can track things like which room the person is in, when doors open and close, if the person's watching a lot of television, lights going on and off, and other household appliances. Using this information, it is possible to assess problems that might indicate a neurodegenerative disease. Things like increased isolation, problems, changes in sleep patterns, or any actions that indicate a change in short-term memory. That wraps up this week's video. Be sure to join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. For the ECN channel, I'm Casey Panetta, and this has been your Engineering Update.